For those of you that don't know, my name is Devin Lorp, and in 2022, I built this shipping container home out of five shipping containers named the Pacific Bin, and it ended up exploding and being the most followed Airbnb in the world. In this video, I'm gonna be getting real with you guys and breaking down five reasons why I may be done making shipping container homes forever. And if any of you guys are considering building shipping container homes, you're definitely gonna wanna consider these five things before you take the leap. This video is gonna be a little bit different than my normal style videos, because this is gonna be more of a hot take of me explaining my true feelings behind this home and if it was worth all of the sweat equity that I poured into this. There's two very unique builds happening by the end of this year, so you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you're following along. So my first point is the cost to build this home. One of the biggest myths behind shipping container homes is that they're way cheaper to build than conventional homes. And to be honest, if you're doing a one story, maybe two containers, maybe three on the bottom, and they're not stacked in any unique way, or you're just stacking two directly on top of each other, it most likely will be a lot cheaper, but the big kicker is once you add a second story here, that's when your costs start to stack up really quick. So for those of you that don't know, shipping containers are not meant to be stacked like that. They're meant to be stacked corner to corner like you see on the big freighter ships. At first glance, you probably wouldn't realize that there's tons of extra structural steel involved. Like you'd probably notice the four x four angle going around the windows, but I did design it so that a lot of the beams and channels can be hidden in the walls. So you can't even tell they're there. So it does seem like I just dropped these containers on top. But for example, there's a nine inch channel that runs right behind this that supports the whole upper part of that box there. And then there's another one right in here and same on the opposite side of the house. So they almost work as four posts holding up these upper two containers on each end of the house. You can see more of the structure from in here. There's some I-beams that were required here, some more nine inch channel in these walls, these walls, and over there supporting the rooftop deck. Structural steel is one of the biggest ads. Another one is the spray foam insulation. The spray foam was almost $20,000, which you do have to use a closed cell foam in shipping containers because the steel will pretty much work as a flash point for condensation, but that closed cell foam acts as a vapor barrier so, so that moist air is never able to get on the container and actually flash and turn into liquid. Another thing that plays into that is that you also have to frame out each of the walls inside so that you have a cavity for the spray foam to go and also a nice surface for the drywallers to attach to. So not only do you have to pay for structural steel, but you do still have to pay for lumber. Granted, it is less because you just have to frame out two by fours, not two by six or eights like you would do in normal conventional homes. So it's a little bit cheaper, but your steel ultimately puts you a lot higher for the structure. Which leads me to my next point, which is routing for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing components. In normal homes, you have 12 inch floor joists. You have plenty of room to run all your plumbing, electrical. If you're on the second floor, you can just cut in the lights for the floor below. But shipping containers, you don't have that luxury. When you stack them on top of each other, there's only a couple inches between, which makes lighting the home really tricky, especially if you're gonna have this exposed metal aesthetic of the initial shipping container. There was so much planning that it went into the layout of this home to make it as livable as possible while still being functional. For example, on half of the house over here, you can see we'll be cutting in lights in the ceiling, and that's because there is a wedge roof sitting on top but on this side of the house, we just have up lighting and couldn't put any penetrations here because it's part of the water barrier system and we didn't wanna be poking any holes up to an exposed deck and have water problems down the road. So before getting to the next point, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is AG1. I can honestly say for the last six months, I've been drinking AG1 and I don't know what I would do without it. Now that I've wrapped up my latest build, the Cedar Hollow, I'm finally able to have life get back to normal and I'm able to get back to the gym and really focus on my health. By far the biggest difference that I've noticed since I started drinking AG1 is my energy levels. Every morning before I was drinking AG1, I would have a couple cups of coffee and then in the afternoon I'd have a few more to just sort of like keep my energy levels up there. But with the B vitamins and magnesium in AG1, it's able to give you a nice sustained energy boost throughout the day, which seems to last a lot longer and doesn't feel artificial, like a random little caffeine hit from a cup of coffee. With so many big projects coming down the line, having a healthy immune system is huge for keeping me on top of my game. Now, I don't just put anything to my body and after doing some deep dives learning about the product and the team behind AG1, they're actively working to make AG1 the best product it can be. They only use the purest of sources and their manufacturing and testing facilities test for over 950 contaminants and impurities. Every batch is NSF certified for sport, the gold standard for those who follow strict rules on the supplements that they take. As an added measure, their manufacturing facilities are TJA registered. This regulatory body 
body verifies the strictest compliance standards in the world. Go to drinkag1.com backslash Devin Lorp or scan the QR code to get your free welcome kit that includes this awesome canister, the shaker, a year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five extra travel packs of AG1. So thanks AG1 for sponsoring this video. Then my next point is that none of the contractors, architects, structural engineers that you're working with have ever worked on shipping container homes, or well, maybe some of the structural and architectural people will have dealt with them, but it's gonna be a very few majority of contractors that have worked with them. So you're gonna to have to be combing through the plans, really thinking through every single step of the build, which is why you see a lot of homeowners that are very DIY and hands-on with their build, tackling container home builds, because there is so much that goes into it. And you have to be sure that everything is done right, otherwise you're gonna have problems years down the road. Now I'll give you a little insight into one item that I never see talked about on YouTube or Instagram regarding container homes, and that is proper ventilation inside the home. So my home, for example, has a mini split system where there's five heads, two on the main floor and then one in each bedroom upstairs. So each of the mini split heads provides proper heating and cooling to the air, but you still do have to have ventilation throughout the home where you're pulling in new air and exhausting out old air. Otherwise, you're gonna have humidity buildup inside the home. So you definitely wanna make sure that your ventilation system is set up correctly. If you don't have your ventilation set up right, you're gonna run into some mold issues down the road where humid air flashes and condensates, so it makes like a little water droplet on your steel gets onto all your wood framing and starts to rot away and mold starts to grow on the framing. So ventilation is key. If you are considering building a shipping container home, I can't recommend enough checking out my plan set down below. There's a code where you can get 70% off of the construction plans. There's still a few codes left. They will save you so much time and so much money not having to go through the whole planning process and waterproofing details. You could just reference all mine and build yours exactly how you want. And a lot of the architectural details are able to be used on on any sorts of layouts of container homes, especially if you're doing two-story unique builds like this, this is a perfect set of plans. So you can also shoot me an email if you have questions down below at info at the As I'm editing this, I realized I didn't record point number four, which is that container home construction takes a lot longer than conventional construction. With me just wrapping up the Cedar Hollows build, I now know how quick you can build a home when you're just doing stick frame builds which is a lot quicker. You don't have to weld all the way around windows. There's no big structural welding you have to do. You pretty much just build the walls on the ground, stand them up, and you're good to go. So definitely know that if you're getting into this, it's gonna take you a bit longer, but the payoff is in the really cool aesthetic that you're left with at the end. Which leads me to my fifth item, which is you're fairly constrained when designing the home. You essentially have eight by 40 foot cubes that you're just stacking however you want, which if you are designing a home, hop on Amazon and get some of the little Brio train car 40 foot containers and you can stack them and play around with designs. But laying out how all the cubes stack together is fun from the outside, but then once you look at your inside footprint, it's really tricky to try and space plan and get everything to lay out perfectly so that it all works well together. So it does constrain you in the sense that you can't just frame out five more feet on the house or design that two feet bigger. So you are stuck with those 40 by eight foot sections, but that is one of the direct trade-offs for having a really cool looking structure that's just these metal cubes. So end of the day, will I be building any more shipping containers? I really don't know, <laughs> to be honest. This thing was a ton of work, but I think now that I've gone through all the steps once, the second round would be a lot easier and there were some lessons learned that could definitely expedite the construction process and just make things a little easier, especially using the same contractors to build again. And I guess one of the biggest things for me, knowing that I wanted this home to be a short-term rental, is that the design is so unique and there's nothing like it in the area. There's all sorts of A-frames out here. There's all sorts of little riverfront cabins, but there's nothing that looks like the Pacific Bin. So it really is a one of one, which when people book vacations, they wanna stay in extremely unique looking homes. In the next one to two years, I most likely won't be building any more shipping container homes, mainly because I'm trying to stock down the debt from this and the Cedar Hollow, and I just need to take a little bit pulling back on the reins. But who knows, maybe two to three years 
system now, I'll be itching to get behind the welder again and we'll get back at it. And like I mentioned earlier, I do still have my construction plans and a few of the bin 70, 70% off codes listed down below in the link if you're interested in building shipping container homes. I've had so many people reach out and say, hey, this detail saved me so much time. I was trying to figure this out or I was wondering how to do this certain thing. So it really will save you a lot of time and a lot of money because there are a lot of scams out there where you buy container home construction plans where it's just like, yeah, stack the boxes and you're good to go. And that's, that's not how it works. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for following along. Thanks AG1 for sponsoring this video and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.